Unfortunately, the flowers are the same color as the wall, so you may not be able to see, <laughs> but I can see you, Lily. You're looking lovely. That was also the name of my granny, by the way. Okay, today I want to talk to you about these books, ta-da, by a fella called Monsignor Luigi Giussani. He's, he's dead now, he died in 2005, but he had this really cool idea, and this is sort of at the heart of what I wanted to share with you today. He had this phrase, catch yourself in the act of being generated and know that you are experiencing the presence of Christ. Catch yourself in the act of being generated and know that you're experiencing the presence of Christ. So there's lots of things that are exciting or are enjoyable, you know, watching an exciting movie or, uh, you know, bowling with friends, if you're into bowling. You know, so those things can be exciting and there's many different ways we could describe them, different emotions that get brought up in us. But he talked about this thing of being generated. So what does generation mean? You're kind of being created or recreated, doing something that as you look back on it, it gives you life. It's like, wow, that was just so full. It's, it's something more than just normal, fun things that we can do. And for example, teenagers can do, like with the, which was just on his fo initial focus. To be generated, to be recreated. This is somewhat similar, I think, to the experience of St. Ignatius of Loyola, who, when he was just on the cusp of having a, a conversion experience, he was recuperating from an injury. He was in bed and he didn't have many books to read. He had just, uh, you know, the life of Christ written by somebody and some lives, stories of the saints. And that was it. But he would also, he would think, because he didn't have any kind of secular books, but he would remember sometimes what it was like to read those secular books. And he noticed this difference in himself that when he, he read the life of Christ or thought about it or thought about the lives of the saints, it created this joy in him. And there was something similar then with the secular books. He'd think of those stories of knights and heroes and romances and all that sort of thing. And it would create a joy in him as well. But there was a difference in the joy. The joy from the secular stuff, the romance and the excitement and the, yeah, all those things. It was with him while he was reading the thing, but after it left. When he finished reading, it was gone. Whereas what he noticed with the stuff about our Lord and the saints is that the joy kept going. Even afterwards, it lingered. This became the basis of Ignatius' whole uh, discernment of spirits and his whole spirituality. And I think there's something, at least in my understanding of Giussani, there's something similar there is a, in, in this thing of generation, being generated. When you're doing something and, and maybe it's not the kind of thing that you would choose to do. Like lots of people's like, I don't want to do something, you know, holy or, you know, I don't want to spend an hour praying. I don't want to go on a pilgrimage. I don't want to sing Christian songs to the pack of boring Christians. Ew. Have you ever tried it, guys? Because we can have these ideas, what Jasani would say, preconceptions, which are really dangerous. You get it in science, you get it in politics, you get it in friendships, you get it all over the place. We're being prejudiced. We've judged them before we actually encounter the thing itself, the person itself, the experience itself. There's a beautiful feeling after you pray a rosary and it keeps going. When you do the Stations of the Cross, there is an experience that can be had. Even not just, oh, I prayed it and I cried loads of tears and I felt so moved. You might feel completely dry and ugh during it, but pay attention to afterwards. Pay attention to something a little bit deeper than just my fun amateur. Ooh, how, how excited am I right now? It's slightly deeper, but it's much more beautiful and real. That's my understanding of what it means to be generated. So we have to catch ourselves in the act of being generated and know that we're experiencing the presence of Christ. And this is what Jasani proposed to these young people. He said, be attentive as we're meeting, as we're doing this thing. And afterwards, are you being generated? Can you be that honest? And this is the thing. Sometimes we're not honest because we don't want to give up the stuff of the world that we, we're addicted to. And we're like, oh, well, I don't want to give that up. I don't want to be a boring whatever Christian. Guys, sometimes like the boring stuff, the, the boring stuff, it's actually not boring. And it actually brings us way more life. And we're just believing a lie of the world and the devil. There I go, mentioning the devil again. And the reality is that the things of God generate us. I would rather be generated. I would rather be made alive in the moment to what is true, good, and beautiful than be propped up by a false sugary enjoyment. That so many things in the world are just that, just a false sugary enjoyment. But how can we, can we drill into and invest into and, and seek out more this generation that comes from doing what is of God and even just normal normal life things, but just do them with him. And what's amazing, you can do this. 
Giussani was like taking the, almost taking the scientific method and applying it to, to Christianity in a certain sense, in a, in a very realistic sense and not in a narrow reductive sense. The narrow reductive sense is where I expect God to act like a mathematics equation or like a, a chemical experiment. And that is doing a violence to God and irreverence to him because we're not being true. Our method doesn't match the object. We're trying to squeeze this person, this divine person, into a chemical compound. And that doesn't work. And that's at least rude. So his whole thing is like, no, no, use this method, but use it fairly. If you're banging your head against the wall because you haven't, you can't find God in the world and he isn't proving himself to you and you feel an obligation, you feel that he has an obligation to prove himself to you, you're never going to find him. Because God hides from that kind of arrogance, but he shows himself to the humble. If you will humble yourself, and to humble yourself does not mean I plug my brain out and I just start making these blind leaps of faith that are not based on rationality. It's like, no, no, absolutely. Like, read Jasani. Jesus is real. His proposals are true. Um, so why not give it, a, give it a whirl? Give it an old, give the dice an old shake. Give it a try, because it is true. And if you actually be honest, you will experience that. If you're actually honest with it, God is able to handle our honesty. He's able to handle our verifying, not our arrogant demanding that he prove it be true, not our presuming it's all lies as our first stance, but rather giving him the benefit of the doubt and humbly proceeding with a bit of verification. Oh, all right, let's give it a go. And looking a bit deeper than just the surface the surface results, the surface answers that the world sometimes plasters, uh, a fake plaster upon Christianity. Anyway, there you go, guys. God bless you. Hope that's helpful. Bye.